So let's talk about escapement from the basement. This week, it took us to Howl, Baltimore's coolest pet supply store. <clears throat> we have a great talk with Troy Lewis, the store manager at the Federal Hill location. She discusses Howl's mission, which is to offer the highest quality, natural, ethically sourced and manufactured foods and products for dogs, cats, and small animals. What dog cookie is trending now, you may ask? Well, naturally, you come here to find out, because I would. Which ingredients should you always avoid when you're buying your pet's food? All this and more will be revealed right now. Take it away. Today, in our escapement from the basement, we are here at Howl, which is an amazing store for dogs and cats, and much more we will find out. And we are here today with, we are here with Troy Lewis. Yes. Hi. So this is an amazing space that you have here. Beautiful Federal Hill. Thank you. So I was looking a little bit over your website. Can you explain more about what it means to be products for dogs and cats that are ethical, sustainable? What does all that mean to the consumer? So to the cons well, to us, because we have pets of our own and we care about what goes on them and in them, we've done all the research for you guys so that the majority of the products that you pick up in this store, it'll be great. And like as opposed to what you pick up at your grocery store. Like right. Harris Teeter. I see people shop for their dogs all the time there. I look at the ingredients at some of those um, some of those like treats, toys, and even the food there. A lot of byproducts, a lot of mystery meat, a lot of fillers that don't really serve your dogs or cats in the best way for their nutrition and overall well being. So that's what we're here to kind of help educate you on and know that when you walk into this store, you've got nothing but great options. That's awesome. So when, you, when you're looking at pet food and the first ingredient is grain, that's probably not a good sign. No, um, they're obligate carnivores. Well, dogs are, cats are obligate carnivores. Dogs are um, omnivorous carnivores. But either way, meat should be the base and the bulk of what they consume. So that's the way they'll get all their amino acids, all the proteins, and all the elements that they need is really just in their meat. So, and I noticed like instead of just, you know, chicken byproducts, you guys have stuff with lamb and duck and some really more exotic things. Yeah, so I have a dog that has allergies. <laughs> so chicken, beef, poultry, a lot of those options he can't have. Wow. And so now that I have a dog I'm so hyper aware of other dogs that have allergies. So we do offer exotic things like rabbit, like um, the duck, um, and we even have vendors that have like alligator skin, rabbit ear, like oh, wow. gross stuff. But <laughs> that's the best stuff you can give your dog as far as like them eating from how they would um, if they were in the wild. Great. So. And I have to ask the question: <laughs> What generated the UP on it? There must be a story there. So our <laughs> our base location in Hamden, they have that sign. Right. But working in other pet retails, people let their dogs pee on any and everything, and oh they don't god. tell you. That's the worst part. Oh my part. god! Like if you tell us, it's fine. But a lot of people don't. It's like we're not going to shame you. We just need to know. Oh my god! Um, we've only had to enforce it once. I felt bad enforcing it, but the rule is the rule. It was a pretty expensive product, so this dog. What did the dog feel? It was um a big bag of freeze dried raw patties. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, it's like a fifty dollar bag. <laughs> See, now that's our dog would find. Yes, that's the, most the thing. Expensive. The most expensive thing. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I can see it. So, do people generally bring their animals with them, and are they generally behaved or not so behaved? Most of the time, the dogs that come in here are very well socialized. So a lot of them are also people dogs, so they come in just to see us, not necessarily to see other dogs. Um, yeah. But most of the dogs here are great, and a lot of the owners are good if they do have a reactive dog or a dog that isn't so well in social settings. A lot of people are good about letting us know um, that their dog has some sort of you know, social issue, and so we can kind of help gauge their experience with, you know, you know, I told my boss I had social issues, but every time I go in, there's other employees. It doesn't seem to even matter. I don't know. So I yeah, see I'm... that you offer delivery and pickup. Um, so Chewy customers have no excuse. 
Um, is there a delivery area or will you yeah, like, ship? What's your delivery area like? So delivery is through our Hamden location okay. since the McHenry location and our Mount Washington location is relatively new. We don't offer that yet. It could be in the future. Um, but those would be within the Hamden area. I don't know the zip codes off the top of my head, but those are listed on our website, which zip codes we can deliver to. Gotcha. That's very nice yeah. in this world of delivery. Yep. Um, so you offer so much more than just, you know, food and toys and treats and, and grooming tools. It just goes, it goes on and on. Um, I was very intrigued by your line of, of cat calming stuff, like with hemp. And is that a popular item? It's not as popular as it should be because <laughs> cats have their issues. Oh, yeah. um, but it's very effective. And with things like CBD oil, um, melatonin, um, chamomile, things like that, it, it is helpful for cats that you know have issues getting along with other cats or just high energy. It even helps with like joint issues if you have an older cat, cats with tumors, things like that. And we do also have it's like a pheromone spray that's like calming and it's like a diffuser you can put in the wall or spray in the air and that helps a lot. That's, that's what I had to use with, with Vlad when, when he was spraying mm -hmm. when he yeah. first came. And that seemed to be the only thing that shut it down. <laughs> so it's natural and effective, which is the best part. And you guys have a lot of raffles on Facebook. How did that kind of come around? Um, right now we are working up to our grand opening slash 20th anniversary. Okay. So our original location, their 20th year anniversary is coming up on the 17th of September, and our grand opening is tied in with that week. Okay. So that's why we have so many raffles going on right now. We'll have our own for this specific location, but Hampton has some really nice prizes. Like yeah, who gets the prizes? There must be, that's like a full-time <laughs> job, but we've seen it. I know, I went at the gym There are so many the vacations. <laughs> yeah, stuff. three nights at Rehoboth right. Beach. Yep. Yeah. Um, so those winners will be called um, for the 17th. Um, and yeah, that's all through Hamden, but we accept like people can enter the raffle here, and we send our tickets to Hamden, and they'll do all of the calling of the winners there. That's awesome. Yeah. Now, do you have any locations that actually do the bathing and the grooming? So, yes, Mount Washington and McHenry, which is this location, okay. both offering self, both offer self washes and grooming. Um, we have two groomers on staff here, and then Mount Washington has one groomer there as well. Dogs and cats? Mainly dogs. Um, for cats, we offer nail trims, but not like full shave downs or baths, because cats, they're a little special, oh, yeah. a little harder to <laughs> manage. Some of the dogs you see, like a dog is enough. Yeah. We have a calico that will run when it, when she sees me get off the deferminator and the, mm. the, she, she runs. She doesn't yeah. get very far, but she attempts to run away. <laughs> yep, not fun. <laughs> have you ever had to bathe the cat? Yes. They'll put up a fight. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, I saw your like your some of your new products, the Stella and Chewies with the stew and all that stuff. How do they find the vendors? Do you know, or do they come to you? And how do you kind of vet out what kind of vendors you have? Yeah, so we look at the ingredients and where they source. So Stella and Chewy, they're based in Wisconsin. Um, they started off family owned, but I don't think they are anymore. Um, so they really align with our morals, and those are the brands that. We do have a few brands that you know you'll find at um, some of the more big box stores like Petco, PetSmart, even Harris Teeter. Um, but that's just because the demands there. You know, I will cater to my <laughs> my customers. Right. Um, but Stella and Chewy's, they're great because of, like I said, they're you know from based in U.S. They do the vetting on their sourcing. Another brand like Open Farm, you can track your animal, basically the animals that were put in your food from when they were born to wow. they were put in your dog's oh bag God. of food. And then you can also see like what farms they came from. You can also see um, what tests they pass as far as how, um, I guess, clean the food is as far as like all the hysteria and other things that they test for. You ever had somebody ask that their pet taste something before they bought um, we do a lot of samplings here, so usually that's not the issue. Occasionally somebody will buy something and be like, my dog didn't like it. And depending on, you know, what it is, we can return it. So. 
Yeah, we have a very picky Yorkie. Yes. I, I can't tell you the amount of treats about this thing. I just take it to work and give it to somebody else. I'm like, you won't eat it. You probably like the selling chewies. Yes. Yeah, freeze dried. He's actually has teeth the aren't great, so. Yeah. That'll be perfect. It's soft. Yes. Yeah. Um, and it softens with their saliva. So mm-hmm. I can give you some of those. Yeah. He's, he's Mr. Mr. Picky Head. What's the most popular doggy cookie? <laughs> um, it's definitely the crab. Okay. <laughs> the wow. crab. It's not crab flavored, but that's the most popular one. But sitting, we're in Baltimore. Should have known. Yeah. <laughs> Have you ever partnered with a shelter like to get animals adopted, or would that be something you ever might look into? Yeah, so currently we work with the FRA, the Feline Rescue Association, and a couple Sundays out of the month we host an adoption event for them. We actually had one cat get adopted oh, successfully, cool. um, so that was exciting, but they'll also be here on the 17th, and we'll have another cat adoption event. I can, think five. Of, I can think of four that we would like to actually <laughs> This is the Snaggletooth Extreme Metal Podcast.